Hello all, this is going to be a very short stream. It's primarily an announcement for some very, very good news. Uh, as of today, Whispers from the Abyss uh, Collected is now available on audible.com. It is a collection, the best of collection of a bunch of stories that were published in the Whispers from the Abyss anthology. This is a zero one release, but the best part is, is an hour and a half, I believe, or maybe it's an hour and uh, 15 minutes. A very big chunk of this uh, of this audiobook is my story, Death War Grease Paint, uh, performed by Lance Axt. And let me tell you, he does one hell of a job on, on the on the reading for this book. And so, you know, if you're not someone who is much of a reader, so that you haven't really checked out any of my uh, my prose fiction as of late or as of yet, uh, you'd rather hear the stories read to you. This is the way to do it. Um, Whispers from the Abyss is an anthology I helped edit and create. Um, along with uh, my story, Death War Grease Paint, read by, again, Lance Axe, we've got a story by Kat Rocha, the only story she's ever written and published, by the way, but it is a good one. Tim Pratt, Greg Van Eekout, David Tollerman, uh, Dennis Detweiler, and uh, let's see, who else did we get on there? Uh, Laird Barron, very big name if you're a Lovecraftian fan, and Cody Goodfellow, all on this anthology. Um, also, if you're a fan of the Delta Green role-playing game series, Greg Stoltze has a story in the collection, as does Oren Gray. So again, I repeat, for any of you who have ever wanted to hear one of my stories because you're not much of a reader, this is your chance to hear Death War Grease Paint read to you by Lance Axe. And as I said, he nails it. As I mentioned, um, Wilbur the Clown in Death War the Grease Paint was very much inspired by Steve-O on PCP. I'm just going to put it straight out. Steve-O from Jackass. Uh, there was a video he did. He used to, he did a series of um, straight to DVD releases in the aughts, and there was one called PCP Changed My Life, and it was Stevo on PCP that inspired Wilbur the Clown. So that's right. When you're reading about Wilbur, the very damaged, drugged up TV show clown hosting a public access kids television show. Just imagine Steve-O's voice. Now, the beauty of it is, in the reading, Lance nails it. I, I You know, he's a very talented actor. He uh, did some of the voices for Titanium Rain, including the starring role of Alec, Alec Kill Killian. So he's a very talented actor. And um, I was quite impressed with his ability to mimic Steve-O on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> or specifically Stevo on PCP. Um, so yeah, across the board, I am very thrilled. I, this has become my preferred version of the story. And uh, for those of you who are looking for some uh, Halloween listening, collection of HP Lovecraft inspired themes uh, uh, or HP Lovecraft inspired stories by some very well-known writers and, and me. <laughs> So the link is in the description. I'll post it in the chat anyway. So yeah, here you go. You, you want to hear one of my stories? This is how it's going to happen. And uh, on top of that, right now, we'll see how long it takes him to do it. But I am having Lance record a audio version or an audio version of Scars to go on Audible as well. So I'll keep you uh, up to date on that. But since I am answering questions about this audio drama or audio book, um, any questions? Just let me know. Uh, oh, cool. So, uh, Paul, uh, Bacchelia, uh, Bach, Bacchelia, <laughs> Paul Bacchelia, you're, you're a fan of Detweiler's work. Yeah, he's pretty good. I, I was quite pleased with the story he submitted. Um, we actually got him to do uh, stories for both of the print anthologies. Um, Whispers from the Abyss has been a long-running anthology series from Zero One Publishing. Uh, it's one of our best-selling titles. Uh, we've got two of them right now. Um, 
And Detweiler is in both of them because we like his work so much. But yeah, when it came time to do a best of audio uh, recording of the anthology, we used one of Detweiler's stories by all means. Um, I don't know. Are any of you familiar with Laird Barron as well? Uh, he is. He's good. He is very, very good. He uh, got a lot of uh, notice and attention uh, eh, about five or six years ago for the Imago sequence, which is, uh, again, a Lovecraftian uh, sort of a novel. Um, but yeah, also, uh, Cody Goodfellow has a story in this that is just warped as fuck. Um and it it uh, has to do with China uh, trying to use uh, was it the DNA of deep ones to create quick uh, quick and dirty products to sell to the West? All right. So, oh, what's going on under World Dream? Well, I'm just making a quick announcement to uh, let everyone know that. The Whispers from the Abyss audiobook is now available. Uh, Whispers from the Abyss was an anthology series that Zero One Publishing has been doing for a while. Kat and I edit it. And we have just gotten a collection of the best stories in the anthology on audio drama or audiobook. And my story, yes, absolutely cosmic horror, Danny. Um, my story, Death War Grease Paint is one of the stories in this anthology and it, it's about an hour and 15 hour and a half long um and as i was mentioning earlier to uh, those who had showed up early it's read by lanced axe who uh, read the star role for titanium rain um he nailed doing the voice of wilbur the clown perfectly when i wrote wilbur the clown the warped tv clown who hosts a public access kids show and decides to indoctrinate children into the cult of cthulhu i had based him on a video that i had seen of steve-o from jackass on pcp and so yeah when when you're reading him imagine steve-o all fucked up on pcp um anyway Lance nails Lance nails the voice perfectly in this. It is it is hilarious. Um, I, I was quite thrilled. I, I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to pull it off, but damn, he did. Uh, links in the description. So what's going on with you guys? Very quickly. Uh, hopefully, I will have another anthology up by the end of November as well. Uh, one I edited and contributed to called uh, Beauty and Ruin, which is a collection of modern reinterpretations of fairy tales. So it's essentially cyberpunk and post-apocalyptic retellings of classic fairy tales. Uh, that's actually what I wrote um, uh, Tabla Rasa for. Tabla Rasa was inspired by a German folk tale called The Plague Flies. But there is a, an epically long story in that by um, by Nick Cole of Galaxy's Edge that, I mean, if you have had it up to here with SJWs, that story is going to make a lot of people happy. Uh, Nick wrote this story that is just fucking hilarious. It's about this guy. It's essentially like the Road Warrior. This society has fallen apart. This cop's kind of now a courier he's got his tricked out car with gatling guns and shit and he's transporting something i don't want to ruin it to a colony up in the mountains and on the way he has to mow through with these motorcycle gangs of angry sjw feminist dykes and it, it the gratuitous violence is to 11 in this um and you could tell when nick was writing this he was just getting a lot of Got a lot of his own aggressions out because he was sick. This was shortly after he had uh, he'd written, I believe, shortly after he'd lost his deal with Random House because they didn't like him lampooning um, uh, someone getting an abortion. But anyway. Yes, thank you very much, Fiana. That is for Whispers from the Abyss. Um, but yeah, uh, the uh, the other anthology I'm talking about, Beauty and Ruin, which I hope to have out by uh, by November, is Beauty and Ruin was a project of mine that I'd had I put my heart and soul into, and then our company collapsed thanks to the woke folk, 
the Wokies, uh, basically ran us out of town with pitchforks because we were the politically incorrect company and we flaunted it. And so I've been sitting on this anthology for almost four years because it just, we had to get our company back up and running and we kind of had to re, uh, reassess our situation, uh, pick ourselves up, brush ourselves off before we could really get back in the game. And with the release of Whispers from the Abyss, I've been releasing quite a few stories lately myself. And hopefully now we're going to have um, Beauty and Ruin available next month. We are back in the game, everyone. It, it's happening. Um, still have to figure out how the fuck to promote things these days, because all our avenues of promotion are pretty much dead aside from this. But yes, it is what it is. And so I would like all of you, if you could, please go to Twitter, go to Facebook, go to all those horrid shit social media sites that I can no longer participate in, and let them know that Whispers from the Abyss is now available, because... Let me tell you, we need we need more fiction out there, more genre fiction that isn't fucking woke, right? Am I right? Yes, yes, absolutely I'm right. I'm shutting my phone up. Um, yes, that's right. If you hear that, that is my shitty flip phone because I refuse to get an iPhone. Fuck that shit. I don't need a little window following me around everywhere. When I go out, I don't need to sit and stare into a little screen all the time. No, when I leave the house, I'm leaving the fucking house. I'm leaving the house to do something other than, than sit in front of a screen. So yeah, I've got this shitty flip phone. All it's about good for is receiving texts and taking phone calls. That can't be traced. Um, and yeah, it is amazing what a wonderful thing it is ditching your iPhone and not having to deal with that in your life. Actually, I never owned an iPhone, but Kat has. And, and oh, uh, you know what? Some things are better just left at home, you know. When you when you're going to the bookstore, when you're when you're going out to a show, it doesn't matter. Leave leave the phone at home. Um, and yes, zero one publishing is fucking back. Um, and my hope is by next year, barring the uh, collapse of society, uh, I would like to get back to publishing anthologies under the zero one label. Um, one of the plans with zero one had always been. I would publish my fiction. We wanted to, we were publishing other people's fiction for a while too, but we were backstabbed and I don't want to talk about it. Um, yeah, it's amazing how quickly people will turn on you when you're no longer, uh, no longer politically acceptable because you're the politically incorrect company. It, it is amazing. People that we are, we had, we, we, we had contracts, we had people we were going to publish books by, but then the 2016 election happened and they didn't want to talk to us anymore. It wasn't because of, anything we said or anything we did it, shit we we weren't out there telling anyone how to vote or any shit like that it was strictly our motto our motto was no safe space for zero one publishing and we made no bones about it that we were the publisher that would publish the stuff that was too edgy uh too transgressive too extreme or too risky for other publishers to do and that was our invite was look we want the books other publishers are too chicken shit to publish. For instance, Sadist Bible. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily agree with it. Um, I think uh, some of Nicole's other work is a bit more my speed, but it was a story by her that definitely had merit. And um, it needed Nicole Cushing, by the way. Nicole Cushing, it, it, no one else would publish it. So we said, fuck it, we'll do it. We'll fucking publish this book. And, you know, it's even got some political views in it I, th I certainly don't agree with. But, you know what? Fuck it. You know, the fact is we need to be able to publish without fear. And so I, uh, we published that and we had other books on the agenda. And then the election happened and the Wokies just went fucking nuts. And because we were, again, the company that prided itself on being politically incorrect and risky, we got blackballed. We were, we were just essentially uh, shoved out into the corner and, you know, we didn't exist anymore. We lost friends. We lost distributors. We lost a ton of business contacts. It was like five years of work. It all just gone down the drain because of Trump derangement syndrome. And for us, it wasn't even Trump. It was just that we were the company that was politically incorrect and the company that would also publish conservatives and Christians. Ooh, that's right. So yes, we were publishing stuff by uh, lefties, like I said, Nicole Cushing, 
is very much a left-leaning individual. Um, I believe part of the LGBTQ community as well. I, I think so. Uh, very anti-Christian. We published her. Why? Because she had a story to tell. But we also published Christians, Mormons, Catholics, Libertarians, and conservatives. And because we associated with the bad people, uh, we had to get kicked out of town. It was just gone. Um, and yeah. But yeah, the original idea was we would publish other people's books. But another thing I wanted to do was do lots of anthologies so that I could expose people to new writers. Because that's right. We have a dearth of quality right now. And the best way to find new fiction is good anthologies. And we had a rep for producing very good anthologies. Uh, there's a reason the Whispers from the Abyss series sold so well as it did. And usually the trick was, is I would publish usually about 10 unknown writers or new writers or mid-tier writers that weren't very big. And then I'd usually get three big name writers in the book as well to kind of sell it. And it worked great. And that was the plan for my book, Beauty and Ruin. Um, that, oh, Tim Pratt. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that is a good story. Tim did a good damn story. I think he did what my friend fish fingers. That is one of the funniest damn things I've ever read. Uh, that was in uh, whispers from the abyss one. Um, but uh, yeah, for uh, Beauty and Ruin, which is the post-apocalyptic and cyberpunk retellings of fairy tales, you know, at the time, four years ago, fairy tales were losing their teeth. I mean, everything was a Harlequin romance novel. All these fairy tales were getting pussified. So I said, okay, let's put the teeth back into fairy tales. Fairy tales were never pleasant. They were never, they were never all sweetness and light, which is weird that they're thought that way. No, no, no. Fairy tales were the original horror stories, to be upfront. Think about Hans and Gretel, which is cannibalism, starvation, woman getting shoved into an oven. Pleasant stuff. Um, so anyway, I gathered up some writers and I said each, I had each of them do a uh, retelling of a classic fairy tale. Um, and it was like I said, I got a handful of mid-tier writers or unknowns, people that, you know, I thought should be getting more attention than they were. And then I got some big names. And so let me read you the table of contents just to give you a sense of what's going to be in this book. Because um, I'm very excited. Again, this was a bit of a passion project. This all came out of my own pocket, not the uh, company. Um, as far as big names go, we've got stories by D.L. Young, who has done a ton of cyberpunk stuff. We've got a story by the ever-famous Nick Cole of... Uh, uh, Control Alt Revolt and uh, Galaxy's Edge. That man's become a superstar, and yeah, like I said, he's the one that does the fairy tale. Or the fairy tale. It's a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood, where it's basically the road warrior against SJW biker gangs, and it is brutal, hilariously brutal. Um, got a story by Jeff Noon, one of my favorite authors. Yeah, that was a real, real score to get Jeff Noon in the book. Um, Jeff Noon kind of redefined cyberpunk in the 90s. He, he wrote the book Vert and Nymphomation, which are both excellent, excellent stories. And I highly recommend them to anybody. So yeah, there you go. Those are the three big names. And then I got a bunch of mid-tier writers and unknowns to uh, be published as well. Uh, there's, uh, was it er Eric Del Carlo, who... Uh, Really, really underrated. The guy's an excellent writer. I have no idea what he's doing now. Uh, as I said, I wrote Tabla Rasa for this book, so that's in there. Got a book, uh, got a story called Silver Hands by an author named A.C. Wise, who at one time I would say was one of the best up and comers until she, I don't know. She's writing trans stuff now, and it's like, you know, she was really good. And Silver Hands is a damn good story, but yeah, she's kind of just, I don't know, it's all this kind of whimsical, what is it, the, the trans glitter brigade, I don't know. If it works for her, it works for her, but I'm not into it. I, I preferred it when she was doing sci-fi and horror because it, it had real edge to it. Uh, Nia Vika by uh, Jonathan Sharp, who's primarily a musician. He did the music for Titanium Rain. Uh, for those of you back in there who was a Gen Xer, you might remember him from the industrial bands New Mind and Biotech. 
Uh, he also had some participation in the uh, Cybertech project for a while. Um, Hensbane by Nicole Cushing, who, you know, mid-tier writer, as I said at the time, she was another up-and-comer. Uh, she did Sadist's Bible, uh, a story by a guy named Greg Mel uh, Melor, who's just done short, short stories. Story by Oren Gray, who is a pretty successful mid-tier writer now. Very, very talented guy. Um, and I am I am thrilled that this is finally going to see the light of day. Um, so that hopefully will be next month. And hopefully around the same time, we will see. What the fuck are the... Who the fuck is this? Webcam HD XYZ online... Oh, Hold on. Let me ban this shit. Do you notice that uh, more and more porn shit's getting spammed onto uh, YouTube lately? I mean, are they just not trying or what? Um, let's report this fuckhead. And uh, let's ban them. Wait, I can't ban them? Okay, put them in a fucking timeout forever. Uh, why can't I boot this fucker? Well, thank you, Fiona. It looks like you had... Um, looks like you already took care of it. Thank you. Bot in the chat. Destroy, destroy. Yes, exactly. Yes, 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 webcam, blah, blah, blah. We all know that there are titties on the internet. You don't need to tell us. Um, shoot to kill, absolutely. Let's see. So let's see what your comments are. And yeah, as I said also, I am very, very close to getting um, boobs of steel ready. Uh, it's far closer to completion than I had thought, which makes me very happy. Um, I'm going to be hopefully talking to Professor Geek uh, sometime this week about the book as well, uh, in private. I'm interviewing him for the book. I want to, he's going to be quoted quite a bit because he's a bit of an expert on some of this stuff. Uh, let's see what you got here. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Fiona. Um, Stream time already. Wizard on standby, ready to deploy bro grabs and other friendly ordnance on your command. Bro grabs away, sir. Is there a limit on what you won't publish? If I hear the Japanese say there's no limit, then I know there's no limit. <laughs> For the West, that's not really true. Um, yeah, there, well, yeah, there is a limit on what we would publish. Uh, first off, it's got to have quality and substance. I mean, if it's just gratuitous shit, I mean, if you're just, it's, if it's exploitive just for the sake of being exploitive, nah, we're not interested. If it's porn, no, we're not interested. And what I mean by porn is that, um, in its true meaning, porn is supposed to have, uh, is exploitive with no redeeming qualities. <laughs> um, yeah, we're not interested in that. I mean, above all, it has to have a good story to it and it's got to have a purpose. Uh, but aside from that, I mean, no, no. I mean, as long as it is a good story and it grips us, yeah, yeah, the door is open. Now, right now, because we've been screwed by other writers, uh, we're not publishing other people's work outside of anthologies. It's going to take a little time to get back on our feet, especially with Joe Biden running the country. What a fucktard. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, back in 2016, before uh, Orange Man Bad happened, the company was doing so well, Kat was about to quit her job. And we, we were she was going to go full time running the company. And then the election happened and it was orange man bad. It just was downhill from there. It was just one disappointment after the next of people going bonkers over politics. And um, I mean, guilt by association. Oh, you talk to conservatives. We, we can't we can't be friends anymore. Oh, you published uh, you published a Mormon's piece of fiction. We can't be friends anymore. It's like, you know, you know, it's amazing how many of these people 
the Polish shit will also turn around and say, I don't agree with what you say, but I'll defend to the death your right to... No, you don't. No, no. Most of these fuckers don't believe what, what Voltaire said. I actually do. I actually do. And that, that is why me, the piece of shit atheist, was very verbal when Catholic churches were being set on fire and Christians were being threatened. Um, no, that is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, I will defend to the death people to have the right to practice their fucking religion, as long as it isn't uh, <laughs> infringing on my own rights. But yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, all, I, I really pissed me off, for instance, when all these churches were getting vandalized and you saw lefties celebrating it. It's like, no, no, that's bullshit. Uh, Scars was really good, av uh, really good as advertised. Oh, thank you. A sequel would not be the worst thing, but I understand if you want to keep it as a one-off. Yeah, I mean, I can only tell that another story if it's in me. I mean, I've toyed with the idea of possibly talking about James when he was on the uh, Atropos uh, pulling down satellites with the crew, but that wouldn't involve a talking rat, so I don't know. Um... Yeah, I, I think it's time he he just goes solo. I, I think Tim Pratt is, unfortunately, it doesn't matter how talented you are if you're a, a white male, if if uh, you're straight, if you're not insane, <laughs> you're not you're not in the you're not with the cool kids club anymore. Um, I'll get this next with my hey, excellent, thank you, Fiona. I look forward to hearing what you think. You know, one of the interesting things, going through the old uh, Whispers from the Abyss, one thing that really shocked me was looking back at how many times there were authors who had put swipes at conservatives in their story, not realizing that it didn't really work. Like, um, more than a few times there were stories where you had a scientist ripping on conservatives for having a problem with genetic engineering, but yet the scientist is evil and kind of proves them right in the end which I always thought was kind of ironic. Um, they happen to be straight, exactly. What? Wait, there are titties on the internet? This is news to me. A whole new world is opening up all of a sudden. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you know, haven't I been sending you the roughs just for you to take a glance? Because... Um, Hey, you're a woman, you're an author. Uh, your opinion on this subject is actually very critical. Just glad you found some of my rant for the book. Yeah, I did actually. Um, and as the, when I, especially when I get into the hero's journey, I'm really going to get into that. I'm also, when I get to the chapter on Amazons, I'll be uh, quoting Elton, who who has not been in the chat lately. So uh, wondering if he's just busy as hell or if he's another person not getting the notice. Um, that, uh, you know, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to be moving uh, to a new YouTube channel as well, because this, this channel's been throttled to hell. No one's seeing the videos anymore. Okay. His Axiom series. Some Rainbow Specials thinks he can thinks his same-sex couples are more male gays, but I found them cute. They were happier per tags. Oh, okay. So you've gotten chapters one, zero, one, three, and four so far. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I skipped two because um Chapter one, I broke into two chapters, so I think you've already read that. It, the The whole bit I wrote about Harley Quinn, I broke into its own chapter. Hey, Victoria, what's up? So, um, again, for those arriving late, I wanted to announce to everyone that Whispers from the Abyss is now available on Audible. Whispers from the Abyss is a long-running Lovecraftian-themed anthology that Kat and I have been publishing through Zero One for quite a while. It was one of our first publications, in fact. And um, 
it, what we did is we picked some of the best stories and we had them put to an audio book. So for those of you who aren't book readers, now you can listen to it. And what makes me very happy about this is that Death War Grease Paint, my story, is on this anthology. So if you want to hear Death War Grease Paint read, Grease Paint read out loud, this is the place to do it. And one thing that makes me very, very happy is the voice actor, as I mentioned, Lance Axt, nailed the voice of Wilbur the Clown. Um, when I wrote the story, as I told people earlier, I had based Wilbur, the TV clown who uh, runs a kid's show and decides to indoctrinate the child audience into the cult of Cthulhu, he was inspired by a video I saw called PCP Saves My Life, Saved My Life. And it is, I, th I think it's like 40, uh, it's two hours of Steve-O on PCP. That's the whole video. And it was Steve-O on PCP that inspired that character. So when Lance read Wilbur the Clown, it shocked me how well he did uh, the Steve-O voice. I, I, he's, a, he's a talented guy, but I was blown away at just how well he did it. And it's hilarious. It makes it so much funnier. Um, I had I kind of had the same idea of making anthologies to put my work and other fellow writers' friends down just to have it out, down and explore ideas we had. The Bunny Girl one will be there. Um, bunny Girl? What is this bunny girl you speak of? There's a T in that, but yeah, Lance axed. <laughs> I read a lot of online story and fanfic. Seems to be a trend with a lot of left-wing uh, writers gleefully write about genocide, war crime, and atrocity. Yeah, I've noticed that too. It's a little warped, isn't it? Not that I don't try, but everything in my life is running around on my hands. Audiobooks are blood. Yeah, well, you know, that's it. We are busy. We live in a very busy culture. We're always busy. And yeah, if you can pop in a, uh, you know, audiobook while you're driving or running or working on something, all the better. I mean, and I'll be upfront, reading's good, but there is something to be said about a good book read by an excellent reader that brings something to the book that your brain can't. And yeah, if you can get somebody who is a legit actor, with who's an excellent orator, who can do voices, who can do mood swings and all that, yeah, it makes a difference. In fact, I contend that Lovecraft stories are a pain in the ass to read, but a joy to listen to. I honestly have a real hard time reading Lovecraft's fiction. Listening to it? No. Now, I've heard almost all of his stories now read out loud. Um, I had a, um, I have a couple discs that I bought years ago at a, a con convention with Doug Bradley, you know, the you know, Pinhead, the Hell Priest from Hellraiser. He had released these on his own dime, something he just wanted to do. And he read a bunch of Lovecraft stories. So you've got to imagine Doug Bradley, Pinhead himself, reading Lovecraft stories. It, it works. Uh, also, the Lovecraft uh, audiobooks read by Wayne June are, are excellent. That guy has got an incredible voice. It's like one octave higher than Dr. Claw. Could you create some desktop wallpapers of Case File Arkham and Scars? Sure, sure. And I could put them up on my website. I've been uh, I've been updating my website lately. It's not done yet, but um, here we go. Uh, this is my website, J. Shirofini. I will do that. I will put um, desktops up. Also, I plan to have audio samples of Whispers from the Abyss and... Um, titanium rain up pretty soon as well it's just time time i mean my top priority now is getting the books out so i just have to do it uh, in between uh, breaks i suppose ian gordon from horror uh, from horror babble does amazing readings of lovecraft and others on youtube i think i've heard a few of those um so that is the news. So uh, quickly, for those of you who have just arrived, 
Did everybody catch the news about the anthology Beauty and Ruin that hopefully will be available next month? And you're all aware now that Whispers from the Abyss, which includes my story, Death War Grease Paint, is now available on Audible. Links in the description. Hmm. The left really fetishizes chaos and the collapse of society. Postmodern moral relativism. Rules for thee, not for me. Oh, snap. I think I got it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you notice they are really enamored with the, uh, what is it, the cozy apocalypse, which is society collapses. And, and it's kind of a fun adventure for me and my friends. And then we get to rebuild society. Uh, it's kind of the ultimate wet dream. Yeah, I should probably talk about that on a, a writer's room sometime. Uh, so, yeah, I'm thinking I, I'm trying to figure out whether I want to have Nadine do a review of, uh, of mom first, or if I want to do a video of Nadine talking about Superman being gay. Okay, sure, Eloise, I'll try and get those up by the end of the weekend, if you want the wallpapers. Um, and just as a quick reminder, I'm sure you all already know, but Scars is available in print now for, I believe, $5. And it's a little over 100 pages. Nice little novella. Very pleased with it. So check it out. Um, all right. Well, I've been on for 36 minutes. I probably should get on with my day. Uh, before I do, though, is there any other questions you guys have for me? I believe Kat and I will be going live on Sunday, by the way. I uh, still don't know what we're talking about. Uh, I think Kat might do another Jimmy Olsen. I'm not sure. Just got my copy of Whispers from the Abyss along with an idea for a new villain. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, another thing I'm going to ask is, uh, again, please, please, please leave reviews. Um, right now, you can't even punch Whispers from the Abyss into the search for Audible and get it unless you type it out in a complete sense. You type Whispers from the A, it doesn't come up. Um, and that's because we're not a major publisher. And we're not woke. So, yeah, help me with that algorithm. Definitely listen to it. Post a review. As I said, it doesn't have to be too involved. You can say, man, this is awesome balls. You know, it doesn't. Anyway, <laughs> uh, thanks again. Hope uh, Maybe I'll come on. Maybe I'll go on live later tonight after I get some writing done. Maybe I'll share what I've been reading. I can add to the conversation about how right-leaning writers approach the apocalypse. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, Nick Cole's kind of a master at that, isn't he, by this point? Um, although I think really we might want to actually talk about the difference between uh, the woke uh doomsterism and uh the fact that it's in fact the right uh and the middle that are writing the more optimistic stuff these days you know the the left wing is currently in power but all they can see is doom says a lot doesn't it when was it the boob book might be coming out again um hopefully in the next month or so i mean it is so close to completion now Bunny girl, Bombshell Betty, gets her hands on an anti-mech gun during a worker's riot and fights robots. Oh, okay, that sounds cool. And she's a cat? Or she just looks, She, I don't know, is that part of her affectation? Uh, okay, well. Well, okay. Thank you all for hanging out with me this morning. I've got some writing to do. And uh, if you haven't, please at least give a look at Whispers from the Abyss on Audible. Links are in the description.